gunshot was nearby too. <laughs> so he was right. Violence is an inevitability. It is if someone is planning to use violence to create chaos, then yes, but it's not inevitable if you just want a peaceful protest. Yeah, we haven't reached that stage yet. <laughs> I can't afford to take chances. Not now. Piero, march the crowd. Construct the barricade. Yes, ma'am. Fontaine, Falcon, we're going to find the source of this disturbance. It came from here, Inspector. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> I'm moving as fast as the old legs will. Mon Dieu, a body. This woman must have been the target of the gunshot we just heard. But I don't see a shooter. I think the gunshot came from over here. Inspector? Falcon? Well, well, I should have known that the Freudian killer would have had a part in this. Inspector, I'm not... What do we have here? A filthy cup and a dead girl. Madame, thank goodness you're here. I saw the whole thing. This poor innocent mademoiselle was approaching the police line with her hands in the air. When all of a sudden this brute of an ins police inspector yelled, Get back, you filthy rebel! He drew his gun and shot the bird point blank through her heart. What's this nonsense? What are you prattling on about? Hm. Thank you for your input, Ramus. It hardly surprises me that a member of the police would be the one to cast the first stone. I think we're being a little rash. Let's take a breath, examine the situation, and... Wait a moment. You wear an eye patch. You only have one eye, Inspector. Hm. How observant. Tell me, were you the policeman who killed the rat at La Halle too? The market? What, what are you talking about? Hm. Two incidents of a one-eyed policeman gunning down an innocent victim. There's no way that that is a coincidence. Unless... One of the wolves wore an eye patch just to commit the murder to frame the inspector. That's totally what happened. What we have here is a filthy corrupt individual who takes pleasure in oppressing the common citizen. Am I right, inspector? I really shouldn't be surprised the stupid rebel makes stupid assumptions and comes to stupid conclusions. But open your eyes. I'm not the assailant here. <laughs> Don't call me mademoiselle, or stupid for that matter. Your guilt is plain to see. Given the circumstances, I ought to judge and execute you right here and now. Falcon, don't just stand there gawking. Vouch for me. Uh, do I want to vouch for him? I, I know that he didn't do it, though. I know he didn't shoot this person because it was the wolves, so I know this man. And his name is Inspector Volarity. He's ruthlessly law-abiding, so much so I can't envision him shooting a man without just cause. <laughs> Shut up, Falcon. I'm done with your idealism. I listened to you, took your words too hard, and now a girl is dead. Well, I'm done taking chances. Ramus, help me escort this invalid to Piero's barricade. I will decide his fate there. With pleasure, madame. Come along, inspector. Fontaine, Falcon, deal with the corpse. Meet us at the barricade when you're done. Hmm, there's no way this was wor the work of the police. You know what, Falcon? I think you might be right. An isolated gunshot this far away from the police line doesn't make sense at all. But that's rebellions for you. They're messy affairs. Sometimes innocents get caught in the crossfire. There's no reason for it. Hmm. Well, there's no use dawdling. Help me get the corpse off the streets. Not yet. I'm gonna examine the body first. Examine the body? We agree that this wasn't the work of Inspector Flaherty, right? And there might be some clues on the corpse that point towards what happened. <laughs> An impromptu coroner's examination? Fine, you have two minutes. After that, we're heading to the barricade, whether you're done here or not. Okay, okay, I know totally what I want to do. Um, don't, c could I use, uh, oh no, I don't have the uh, extractor device anymore from the last case. I wanted to use that to extract the bullet. I wish I could have done that, that would have been neat. Uh, oh well, um, let's uh, inspect this handprint. This mark, it looks like a handprint made in blood. Probably the mademoiselle's. I don't think so. It's the handprint of the l left hand on the girl's left shoulder. 
There's no way a person could comfortably reach that spot on their own back. Hmm, I suppose so, but if it doesn't belong to the girl, then who does it belong to? The murderer. Has to be. Question is, why is the handprint made in blood? Did the murderer sully their hand on the girl's gunshot wound, or were they injured prior to the shooting? They were injured prior to the shooting, because it is Ramus, uh, or... Ramus? No, Romulus who did it. So much to uncover here, and not enough time for a thorough investigation. Uh, what else? Okay, we have a blood spatter here. Do we have anything else? Um, okay, it seems we have two more things. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna uh, explore the head. Everyone's been so fixated on who did this, nobody stopped to ask who this girl was. I don't know, given her clothes, she's probably just another working girl. Just another? It didn't mean to sound glib, but it's true. This is one among the thousands who live in Paris. Who was she? Where did she work? Will her family miss her? I don't know, but in the long run, I don't think anybody will care. Hmm, I care. I can't afford not to. I don't know who this was, but I'm going to see that justice is brought for her death. Alright, one more area to examine. Hmm, this is a bullet wound, right? wound, right? What can you tell me about it? Uh, looks like the bullet took a fairly straight angle of entry to her back. To her back. She was standing right behind the victim. Hmm, bullet size? Caliber? Hmm, let me guess. You're hoping the caliber is different to the caliber of the inspector's gun. That would conveniently get the one-eyed police officer off the hook, wouldn't it? But I'm afraid I can't help you. I couldn't possibly know a bullet's caliber without having a good look at the bullet itself. And as you can see, the bullet is 3 centimeters deep in flesh. So, you need to see the bullet itself. Oh, see, if only I had the extractor device. Help me retrieve the bullet. Help me retrieve it. Retrieve? You mean dig it out? I assume you have a little more experience in this area than I do. Well, you're not wrong. Fine, this will only take a moment. Here you go, one used bullet. Looks like a standard lead rifle or pistol ball, but I'm afraid I can't tell you its caliber. Hmm, why is that? The fruit bullet fragment is up in impact. I gather all the pieces, but I cannot assess its diameter without any accuracy. Hmm, so I guess it was 13 to 17 millimeters. Can't be more specific. Hmm, that's a lot of help. Thanks. Alright, I think that's all that we can explore about this. Appears to be the case, yeah. So we have two clues. That's not a lot to go on, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I'm done here. Oh, very good. Let's move the body off the street. Then we must hurry to the royal palace. Rest in peace. I'll see to it that justice is done. Heh, <laughs> everything's going just as planned. Madame's probably fuming right now. She'll attack the royal palace, the prime minister will flee, and then... Excuse me? <laughs> what do you want? I'm busy. Don't you recognize me? I know my disguises are a little more complex than yours, but I assumed you would recognize Prince Juan when you saw him. You're Prince Juan? Indeed, and you're Judge Romulus, the corrupt wolf. I know what you did. You tried to assassinate the king. You shot the croc monsieur. And just moments ago, I saw you murder a maiden at the Place de la Concorde. You're a vile individual, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 as if you have any proof for that stuff. I'm out of here. I also know you're one half of the Viridian Killer. On any other day, I would've got you where you stand, Fox. But as it happens, I'm a little busy today. Oh, the Viridian Killer is too busy to kill me? Is that the truth? Or is the bullet wound of yours starting to affect your prowess? You must have lost an awful lot of blood. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, hello, Fulpus. Ah, Sparrowson. Perfect timing. Who now? Oh, you're that fledgling. I guess this is what they call be being stuck between a rock and a hard place, huh? Spurson, be a deer and help me restrain the Feridian Killer. <laughs> this guy? He's the Feridian Killer? He looks more like Judge Romulus to me. Well, you'd be right about that too. Wow, two scumbags in one. Alright then. Yes, Spurson, he's two scumbags in one and he definitely has the scumbaggery of multiple people, that's for sure. 
Ow! Mind the wound. Quit your whining, your honor. <laughs> nice takedown, Sparrowson. Check his pockets for weapons. He is a notorious killer, after all. Of course, let's see. What have we got here? Ah, here we are. Pistol. Probably used to kill the maiden. What else can you find? This, an eye patch? Weird. Why would this wolf want with an eye patch? Oh, I know what he would want with that. Oh no, this is bad. Very bad indeed. I don't get it. What's wrong with an eye patch? It's no time to explain. Mousy. What is it, Fulpus? What is it? Take this eye patch to Falcon. If my fears are correct, he'll be somewhere around the pa royal palace right now. Tell him it belongs to Remus's brother. Hurry now. Right away, Fulpus. Right away. I must go too. I need to find the other half of the fruiting killer pair before something terrible happens. Wait, what am I supposed to do with this guy? You have his gun? March him to, to the nearest police station and collect your reward for capturing Judge Romulus. Hmm. Strange day. I agree, Sparrowson. Strange day indeed. Outside the royal palace, the royals have constructed a makeshift barricade of furniture, branches, rocks, and anything else they can find. From behind the wall, the rebels taunt the police and the royal guard with chants. I'm growing impatient, pig. Confess your crimes. I have nothing to confess, you filthy rebel. You and all your rebel friends, however, should confess to 1,000 counts of treason and public disorder. I will see each and every one of you hanged for your flagrant disregard of the law. <laughs> your stubborn attitude is disgusting. A few days ago, you were seen at the market. Witnesses saw you murder a beggar in cold blood. Today, a friar has testified to seeing you murder a girl, completely unprovoked. I don't know why you continue to plead your innocence. But it doesn't matter. I don't need a confession to know you're a killer. Madame Beaumont, stop! The inspector didn't shoot the mademoiselle. Keep your beak closed, Falcon. I'm done listening to your suggestions. This policeman is as guilty as every other monster in our decrepit justice system. System. It's my duty to execute him. Madame, Falcon has uncovered some pretty convincing evidence. I would recommend you hear him out. Please, just five minutes. Five minutes and I convince you, can convince you of the inspector's instance. Five minutes is precious in a time like this. I can't afford it. What if you're wrong? Are you willing to see another dead innocent? That's right. Thank you, madame. <laughs> Having my life saved by the Viridian Killer. How humiliating. Maybe you should stop accusing me of being the Viridian Killer when I'm literally busy saving your life and I've done nothing wrong. Come on, Flaherty. You're a jerk. Quiet, pig. Your life is mine until I say otherwise. Hmm, okay. So, let's recap on what the Frère Remus had to say. Wait, where is he? He's a key witness to the crime. He scarped as soon as he dropped the inspector off, said he has some business to attend to. Business? And that business is murder, isn't it? Man oh man, those barricades are looking pretty scary. But I mustn't fear, for I am a brave duck. I'm the great officer back, handsome, intelligent, strong, truly a fearless hero who will be remembered for... Hello, officer. Ah, you scared me, uh, monk? Frere, actually, Frere Remus. Listen, officer, I have something of great importance to tell you. I was pausing by the rebel camp, and I overheard a conversation. Oh, this sounds good. Go on. They said they were going to launch an assault very soon, and when they do, they're going to rain hellfire on the palace. Oh no, it's just as I feared. What'll we do? Yes, what'll we do? Oh, I love it. It's simple, officer. As soon as you hear the first gunshot, you need to retaliate. Hit them with everything you've got. Every cannon, every rifle, every piece of artillery. Don't leave a single piece of the barricade remaining. That's the only way you can be sure to survive. Ah, total annihilation. I like it. But I'm confused. Aren't you Christian? <laughs> yes, so what? I don't know. It's just your idea it doesn't seem very Christian-y. I mean... Actually, the Bible has plenty of murder in it, but let's not get into religious debates. Ah, I see. You think this is a moral issue. Let me tell you a secret, my dearest duck friend. There is no God, no overarching morality or higher plan, no heaven to save the righteous or hell to punish the sinners. 
Okay, let me rephrase. You don't seem very Christian. There's only you, your artillery, and 10,000 rebels who want to dine on Peking Duck tonight. Understand? Th that's an awful lot to take in. <laughs> let me simplify. It's you or them. It's me or them. Don't give back the wrong ideas. He's just a cute little duck. He doesn't know. 